Lesson three: Line, Metro, and Automation of Processes. In this tutorial, we are going to introduce some objects to make the patch we created in the previous tutorial look nicer. Let's refine our patch by introducing a graphical control for the volume. The name of such a control object is Slider, and can be found in Insert Menu, Vertical Slider. If you right-click on it and select Properties, we can assign an appropriate range to the slider. Since we want floating point numbers between 0 and 1 in order to reduce the volume, we need to edit this field here. Now we can connect it either directly to our signal multiplier or to the number box if we want to display the number that is generated by the slider. We can do something similar for the oscillator as well. We take a horizontal slider, connect it, and once we expose the properties window, we can assign a relevant range of frequencies. In this way, I gained a more versatile control over the signal I'm producing. Let's introduce a new object that allows us to create ramps. What is a ramp? A ramp is a sequence of values in ascending or descending order within an assigned range. To see how it works, let's create a new object and write inside line tilde because we want to create a ramp for signals. Let's delete the slider by selecting it and pressing the delete key and we'll use our line to set the right operand of the multiplier. The idea is to create a crescendo for our volume from 0 to 1. In order to create the crescendo, we need to tell the line two things, which value we want to reach and how long the ramp will last. To do that, we need a message. To create a message, you can type Control-2 or Command-2, or from the Insert menu, select Message. You will recognize that this box is a message and not an object by its different shape. Let's write inside our message 1, because we want the line to reach 1, and 5000, because we want to reach 1 in 5 seconds, or according to the line's syntax, 5,000 milliseconds. Before trying it, let's create another message to go back to zero in one second. We could do something similar for our oscillator as well. Let's create a new line and connect it to the oscillator. Let's say we want to reach 1000 Hz in 3 seconds. and then go back to 50 Hz. So basically, we implemented a glissando. Let's introduce some new objects that will allow us to automate some of the processes we've been doing manually until now. How about we create these glissandos rhythmically and do the same for crescendo and decrescendo? First of all, let's shorten the duration of our glissandos. For example, 30 milliseconds to go up to 1000 Hz, and the same amount of time to go down to 50 Hz.
Now we need something which is able to trigger these two messages rhythmically. To do this, we need to produce the bangs we already met before, but at a given rate. The object for doing this is called metro, because it basically acts as a metronome. It takes as argument the speed or rate at which I want to produce the bangs. Let's say half of a second, so 500 milliseconds. If I connect a bang to the metro outlet, I won't see anything yet because the metro is still off. To turn it on, I need to introduce a new special object called toggle and connect it to the metro's inlet. This object is just a switch. If I select it once, it sends out a 1. If I select it again, it sends out a 0. Let's try to see it in action. And the bangs come out of the metro object each half second. Of course, I can set a different speed for the metro just by adding a number box and connecting it to the right metro's inlet. Because as we said already, sending a number to an object's cold inlet will overwrite that object's argument. We can now connect this bang to the message that sets the frequency of the oscillator. As you may have noticed, there is no difference. The reason is that the oscillator has already reached 1000, so we need a way to set it back to 50 Hz. To do this, I can first connect another toggle to the bang coming from the metro. As you see, each time a bang is received, the toggle is alternately set to 1 or 0. I can check this behavior by connecting a number box to this toggle. Now all I need to do is to tell my algorithm that when this toggle is set to 1, it triggers the up glissando, and when it is set to 0, it triggers the down glissando. The object that allows us to do this is called SELECT. If SELECT gets a value that matches its argument, it sends out a bang from a specific outlet. Since the toggle produces only 0 and 1, these are going to be the arguments of SELECT. When SELECT receives 1, it sends out a bang from the leftmost outlet. When it receives 0, the bangs go out the middle outlet. And if the incoming value doesn't match any argument, the value itself passes through the rightmost outlet. You can easily check this by creating two new bangs and connecting those to the output of the select object. Each time we encounter a new object, it is a good practice to always check its help file. To see it, just right-click on the object you want to know more about and select Help from the contextual menu. Let's close the help file and go on. Now we can connect our two bangs to the messages we want to trigger. and raise up the volume to listen to the result. In this way, we can create rhythmical glissandos. At this point, we are free to set a different speed for the metro, too. And I can already create some interesting scenarios. Nothing prevents us from doing something similar for the control of the volume as well. It is enough to copy and paste the part of the algorithm we want to replicate by selecting it and typing Ctrl-C or Command-C to copy it, and Ctrl-V or Command-V to paste it. Then I can drag it 
and connect the outputs of select to the messages that I want to send to the line object controlling the volume. Let's adjust the length of the ramp of the volume to better perceive the rhythmical aspects. One more thing we can do is to delete the bang we used to trigger the tabright object, because now we could just use the bangs sent out by the metro, which is controlling the oscillator, in order to trigger the tabright automatically. As you can see, metro is an extremely versatile object which allows us to execute something cyclically. With this basic patch, we are already able to achieve an interesting variety of results. In the next tutorial, we are going to see how we can introduce randomness into our processes.